Hello, friends. In music and especially in jazz, there are a lot of different ways that we're able to convey the same harmonic concept. In this video, I'm going to show you nine different ways that we can say G. To start out, we need to figure out what a G major chord actually is. We've played this grouping of notes a lot of times, but where does it come from? And it comes from the G major scale. So let's look at that. We'll play from G to G with an F sharp in there, because we're in the key of G. We've all heard this before, right? So where does that G major chord come from? Well, we're using the root of the chord, the G, which is the third fret of our E string. Then we're going to the third note of that scale, which is a B, the third of our chord. And then we're adding a D up top, which is the fifth of our chord. And this is how a basic major chord is built. The root of the chord, the third of the chord, and the fifth of the chord. And we take the fifth, which is a D, and we put it down here generally. And that gives us our basic major chord. Now as you're playing this, I want you to note one thing. The B is the most important note here, not the G. If we leave out the D in here, we still have that sense of happy and uplifting sound, our major sort of sound. Because this third, the B, tells us whether it's major or minor. If we had the D in there, that's nice, but it doesn't need to be there. So as we go through adding notes to this and providing different flavors to the chord, we want to keep in mind that B is important and we need it there or else the chord is not going to say, I'm a G major chord. So let's first look at some inversions up the neck. Before we start adding to the chord, we can just move the chord up the neck. And what we're going to do throughout this entire video is we're going to think of our uke as a three stringed instrument. The G string is always going to be open. We're always going to have the root of the chord accounted for. We never have to worry about it whatsoever. So we know this G here, we've played this a lot of times, but what if we take those three notes, G, B, and D, and move them up the neck? So we can have open seven, seven, five, gives us our next inversion of the chord. And note, we're always doubling the G there. And then as we go up, we can do open 11, 10, 10. These are all G major chords. And you don't even have to play the open G string, it doesn't matter, because we're doubling that G. Each of these triads, these three note chords, involve all three notes of the chord. This is all the information that we need. So let's take these voicings and see what we can add to them. When I think of major chords and adding different flavors to them, I really think of it as two separate spectrums. We have the spectrum that has our major seventh in it, which we're gonna talk about first, and then adding our sixth, because there are two very specific sounds that elicit different emotions. And that's what we're trying to do by adding these different notes to the chord. So what we're going to do first is take our G major chord. We're gonna make it a G major seventh. And what does that mean? We're now adding the seventh note from the scale, which in this case happens to be an F sharp. A nice floating sound. You've probably played it down here as open two, two, two before. What is that? It's a G major chord, but we're adding an F sharp on the second fret of our E string. But for our exercise, we're gonna move things around a little bit. I want you to think outside the box and play chords that you might not find if you plug them into your chord app and say, what should I play here? Yes, this is a G major seven. We're gonna play something a little bit different here. We're gonna take the F sharp and put it on our C string, which is gonna be the sixth fret, and then the seventh fret of our E string will be a B, and we're gonna put the fifth, the D, up top on the fifth fret. It'll sound like this. Note we always have that G, right? And if we leave the G out, you can hear that this is actually, this is a minor triad. But as we put the G underneath it, we get that nice floating sound of a major seventh chord. And what's important here is the B, which tells us that it's major, and then the F sharp, which tells us that it's now a major seventh. That's what gives us this very specific sound. But what happens if we add one more note on top of this, one more third above that major seventh? We're now adding a ninth to it, which in our case is an A. And we could do this a number of different ways, but let's try this. Again, laying it out in a way we might not think about if we just look up 
chords. So we're gonna keep that F sharp where it is, that major seventh right here. We're gonna play the A on the fifth fret of our E string, and then the B, remember we need our B, we need our major chord. Here is a G major ninth chord. And for you low G players, this will sound really, really nice. I love this on high G, but it gives us F sharp, G, A, B. All of these notes are, that's what we're hearing, just all at once. This is what's called a cluster chord. We have these notes very close together. Now on top of this, we can add one more note. And if you remember back to our G major scale, what would our next note be? Well, we would add a C. But when we're playing a major triad, a major sort of sound, we can't add a C to it. C is the note in our G major scale that gives it instability. Because it's in our D seventh chord, which wants to resolve back to G. So we can't play a C because it creates with our major seventh that sound, the F sharp to the C, a tritone which wants to resolve, right? It's unstable and we want stable sounds. We want happy major sounds here. So by doing this, what we're going to need to do is take that C and make it a C sharp. We're gonna play a sharp 11th chord, a, a G major seven with a sharp 11. And this is really our most unstable of the major sounds. This is what's called a Lydian chord, adding this sharp four in here. And we're gonna play it by keeping our F sharp where it is. We need our major seventh. We need our third, so that's on the seventh fret, and then we need our C sharp. Listen to this. But if we put it over top of a G chord, it's a regular old G. We can have something like this. We still have a nice open sound over top. Now let's look at our other type of major chord we can play. Now on the other side of the major chord spectrum, we have the sort of sixth sounds. And this is adding our sixth scale degree, or an E in our case, to our chord, giving us this sort of sound. And you've probably played something similar to this as an E minor seventh before, open two, open two. A minor seventh, an E minor seventh in this case, is the same exact thing as a G6. It just depends how we're using it in a song as to whether it will function as a major chord or a minor chord. And as we're playing this, we could play it here, but let's lay it out again with our open G string, trying to find new voicings on the instrument. So we're gonna play open, four, seven, five. So we have root, sixth, third. Remember, we always need our third. And the fifth up top. Isn't that a nice sound? That's just our basic sixth chord. Now, we can also strip the sixth away and add the ninth without the major seventh. Remember, for our major seventh pitch collection, we need that F sharp in there. That's what gives it that special sound. We can take it away and still add just the ninth to it, giving us a much more open sound because of this larger interval on top. So we can play it as open two, five, two. of our sixth and ninth voicings without the major seventh sort of go together. All the same collection of notes, just in a different order. And then finally, we can add one more note to this. We can put both the sixth and the ninth in the chord, giving us a G six nine chord, which has an air of ambiguity to it. It's still a G major chord, but it's borrowing sounds from other parts of the scale and gives a really unique sound. So what are we adding? We're adding we have root, third, five, sixth, and then ninth, our A. Right, so we need to have the sixth, the ninth, and the third in here to really give that sound of G major. And we're gonna do that. And this is one of my favorite voicings on high G uke, which is open, four, five, two. Hear that sound? All of these things are saying G major 
in a different way. And I want you to take some time after watching this video to just play around with adding these notes on different parts of the fingerboard and really listening to how each of these chords makes you feel. If you want to dive deeper into jazz harmony, join me over on the Tim Mann's Magic Ukulele Club where we have a PDF download of this entire lesson, but also how we can put it together on the great old tune Out of Nowhere, which we've been working on for the entire month. I'll see you all over there. Mm -hmm.